Each battle is but a day in every war. They add up, though. They matter. General Subatai knew this. He was not a Mongol. His tribe came from the forest far to the north of Mongolia. His father. His father, though, was a famed blacksmith who early in his life had sworn allegiance to follow the great Genghis Khan. The smith's son would serve an even greater purpose for the great Timogen. He was given command in his early twenties. I want to be crystal. This was beyond rare at the time for both his age and his heritage. One of his few surviving quotes is that he swears he will faithfully fulfill his role by using metaphors that would resonate with the steep's nomad. Subutai swears he will protect his leader like a great blanket protects the horse, and that his armies shall always be sheltered by the correct tent. You feel the cunning across the ages. The brilliance of command was that he employed lots of different tools. He had engineers and mathematicians along for the unknown, as well as a vast network of spies for the unknown unknowns. Recon is key in the long war, after all. Welcome back to You've Made Worse Bets, coming to you aboard the Starship Minotaur, the first of the Great Bulls. I'm your captain, CJ. By my side is the grizzled old veteran himself, due diligence. He's a bear. And we are, in fact, a gambling show. Now then, YouTube is a harsh mistress. Please like and share. Okay. So briefly, I wanted to recap some of the insanity we've seen over the past months, really. Remember when GameStop was going back to $20 a share? Yeah, me too. So I'm thinking about Burry's deleted tweet now about how Ken left booby traps along the way. One of my biggest fears is that with nothing more to lose, he doubled down and is relying on being so interwoven to the economy that he won't be allowed to fail. The big bank maneuver, if you will, could also be known as the new American dream for business. Really have to be careful with our bad incentives. This sets up all sorts of bad precedents as well, but ultimately, it goes to show that putting yourself and your pride ahead of American business is going to be bad for you long term. We've allowed bottom feeders and middlemen to shroud their destructive moves for far too long. I'm not sure what tomorrow or the next few weeks, months looks like, but I do know. I do know that it was through selfish greed and most likely criminal activity that got us here. Greed is not good. It's not bad, either. It's useful when it's held in check by opposing greed. When it's not, well, it's kind of how we find ourselves currently today. I think back about the idea of starting Robinhood and how, ha ha ha, we'll own all those dumb retail traders by buying their order flow. Boy, did Corona and social media really throw a wrench into that plan. Wall Street bets used to literally be all about the FDs and the YOLOs and the massive losses. And the fact that it was used to start a buy and hold philosophy en masse to eradicate the shorts isn't just cool. It's historic. It's using the weapons of your foes to talk to them in a language that they understand. Sometimes words are not enough. Anyway. Let's get to the list, shall we? GameStop and AMC, we're nearing the moment of truth. Get your popcorn ready. Also, Elon needs to prep that rocket. TRCH, the dividend, the merger, and that huge pullback yesterday. Yeah, I'd wait to see if you can get a dip. Truth be told, I may grab some of these pre-market. Ah, yes, I wanted to briefly chat about the ludicrous amount of trading that happens in the dark pools. Okay. So look, the point of the market is about price discovery, right? Then we are failing to do this, as well as playing a dangerous game with only half the information. 
I never used to be a big fan of the free market, mostly because you can't buy options. My thoughts have evolved, though. I view it as a vital way to be able to take advantage of price action without having a lot of the volume, since half the volume is happening away from our eyes anyways. OCGN. It's undervalued. Big money has been moving in the past couple days, and I'd be shocked if we don't see some serious upward momentum in the next day or so, really. What's that, number one? I need to fix his mic. You'd short SPCE and ATOS? Well, there you have it. Alf. Stupid day yesterday. It'd be crazy if it kept going up. Yeah, oddly enough, I expect it to after some retracement. DDD. Same premise. Also, the ticker is triple D. Bullish AF. No DD, not you. CCL. It's cruising time again. Expect us to get revenge for being kept off the waters for the past year. I feel really bad for the employees there, though. Bon voyage. VIPS. More money moved in yesterday than has for the better part of the year, I noticed these things. I plan to get some options and some shares if I can get a good dip. Twitter. Personally, I like a lot of the moves that I've been seeing from them on the business side of things. There really hasn't ever been their focus, though. But at some point, at some point, you have to make money. I do love momentum. Yeah, I'll roll the dice with you, Jack. OXY. I like the setup. There's technical reasons as well, but also, call it a bit of a gut feeling. We've made worse bets after all. The Quarzian Empire stood in ruins now. Its cities toppled, and their former inhabitants either captured or dead. Now the Mongols were pushing up against the empires of the West. The buffer was gone. The great general wished to know his opponent, to better understand them. He would personally go deep into enemy lines in order to get the type of information that spies simply could not give. His maneuver would be to circumvent the Caspian Sea and then circle back. The great Khan listened and agreed. Now then, this has been tabled as the greatest cavalry raid in all of history. Three years would go by. They'd ride 5,000 miles and win five major battles, always outnumbered at least three to one. In early 1231, the Caucasus Mountains were part of the territory of Georgia, and they had lots of well-trained knights. The Mongols did their usual withdraw and fire, always leading them into a new trap. Thank you, Parthians. Anyway, the Georgians fled the field with heavy losses. Subatai pressed on, and then essentially did the same thing a few weeks later, except this time, except this time, he trapped the opposing army between the mountain wall and what was moments ago, a retreating force now bearing, <laughs> bearing down on them. Even the king was slaughtered. much like Spartacus before. They grabbed their newly gifted weapons and armor and continued their bloody campaign. There is no true winning until you can turn the master's weapons against them. Subatai made a crossing during winter across the mountains and then faced an army that vastly outnumbered his where their cavalry would be useless. Their enemy waited and tried to simply starve them out. This was where the general was a genius. He didn't do any type of frontal assault, which would just needlessly put men into the grinder. Instead, he used diplomacy. Secretly, he sent bribes out and appealed to them as his fellow raiders of the steppes, who had no real alliance with either these Muslims or the Christians. It worked. Half the force left. Subatai killed the weakened group in front of him. And then he rode down those fellow steep raiders, too. For good measure. Divide and conquer. And then make sure you finish the job.
half measures are deadly for you. All of the defeated survivors banded together to make a final stand against them. But that's a story for another time. Today, gang, be opportunistic. If you see something that in your gut will work, trust that feeling. History is rarely made by those who play by the rules, but rather we carve out our spot in that great book by showing the market something perhaps it's never seen before. Ready up, fools. Destiny has chosen us, and we shall not be found wanting, not on this day. We ride with purpose and determination, a never-ending quiver at our side, ready to unleash the closest thing to hell this side of the Nine Realms. Draw, set, and hold. We loose the arrow.